A very warm welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mawani. Dear friends, before moving ahead, I would like to apologize in advance that uh, today I'm having a sort of uh, rough throat. So I'm really sorry if I'm hurting your ears. Uh, look at this beautiful statement. It is saying that when you pay attention to detail, the picture, the big picture will take care of itself. And from this, we can understand uh, the recent incident that took place in United Nations General Assembly. You know that uh, Pakistani the Pakistani diplomats they, they they displayed a picture and they were claiming that this picture is the atrocities that is conducted by India on Kashmiri people but someone from our side paid attention to the detail right someone spotted that this picture is not from Kashmir it is from Gaza that is in Palestine and see the way the whole the Pakistan that was trying to uh, trying to uh, slam India has been Basically, it is standing at present in a hall of shame. This is what I uh, think attention to detail, right? It is something that I think is uh, it is a matter of one degree Celsius. When I say one degree, what I'm trying to say here is that you know that when you boil water at 99 degrees Celsius, right, you won't be able to change its properties, right? It will be in liquid form, though it will be hot enough that can burn your fingers, but it will be uh, in the liquid form liquid form but if you want to change it if you want to change its property then you have to add that one degree right that add one degree celsius and you will find that suddenly this liquid form will turn into a gaseous form and it will start moving towards the sky same thing applies with our studies as well if we if we add attention to detail if we pay attention while studying to the details then you will be adding this one degree and this one degree difference will add it will be it will be one of the most important or it will act as one of the most important thing in your studies it will elevate you in in through a holistic elevation right basically you will elevate in all different sections right so moving on uh, let's uh, start with something unusual and before doing that let me tell you about our pen drive and uh, tablet courses uh, ssc bank upsc and other government exams this are the things that are provided by uh, this uh, study iq platform and uh, we have different pen drive courses for all these exams and at present there is a 30 percent discount available on it so if you don't have it i would recommend all of you to get it as soon as possible you if you have any further queries questions you can go on to this number we have upsc test series as well uh, which is very interesting designed by some of the best faculties in our country so must have sort of things are available on study iq but remember 30 percent discount is you have like well, two days to go so do it as soon as possible when i say let's start with something unusual what i'm trying to say here is that let's spot what is not important right when i say not important in terms of india and in terms of our preparation or civil services examination and other examinations the thing is uh, newspapers as you can understand it is not published or the hindu newspaper is not published for the the students who are preparing for civil services or other competitive exam right from president to a common man everyone is reading newspaper so the things that you find here is not it is not necessary that all the items that are published in the hindu uh, are important and uh, you should have courage enough as well to drop some things uh, things that are not important because that is that will take away your energy and here that's the reason why uh, we are here to help you and navigate you throughout your daily studies so this uh, fog in london is basically about the political situation that is going on in london we know that brexit uh, that basically means from european union uh, the the bifurcation or you can say the divorce of uh, england our united kingdom from a uh, european union this is brexit all about and uh, we know that referendum took place and they decided that they want to step out of this uh, european union and we have discussed about european union you know that it has basically four pillars it has a, a, a sort of a european commission that is its uh, civil services then you have european parliament so here all the laws are drafted in commission then it goes to the parliament and it is the parliament li just like the parliament of our country they do uh, voting and debate and dissent and everything goes over there and once everyone is happy about the laws that are drafted then it will be it will be passed out isn't it it will uh, the bills will become basically laws of this european union and uh, 
then you have a council as well european council in which you have uh, representatives of all these uh, different countries they have uh, 28 countries at present and remember still brexit or the britain is not out the only the process is on and uh, important thing regarding this uh, process is article 50 remember this thing article 50 of union of uh, european union which britain has used to uh, come out of step out of this uh, union so these are the basically important things and last thing regarding the structure of uh, european union is the justice system so it has a court as well so if there is any problem between these three pillars of uh, european union then it is the european um, court of justice that is going to sort out all the problem now britain is not happy regarding the money it has to contribute uh, britain is not happy about uh, the free flow of people people from different parts of europe are coming into uh, britain and then they are taking away or as per the britain they are snatching the jobs of british people uh, so this is uh, these are the some of the major things uh, right it is all about economy and uh, protecting the economy of britain so that is the reason why we have this brexit this article is about german politics and strangely we have two articles today uh, three articles in total uh, from europe and two articles are pertaining to german politics we know that uh, angela merkel a couple of days ago we talked about that she is going to uh, face elections and now she has won it of course a coalition government will be formed in german in, in germany and uh, the things that we should uh, focus on or the things that we can take out from this article this one as well this one and there is one more this one right this three articles uh, this is again about german politics so it is not that important for us to spend that much time after it but let me tell you that it is all about th we should see the, th the things that are going on in europe uh, from uh, india european union uh, perspective right the relation between india and uh, european union because J this uh, angela merkel she is a pro eu that means she is supporting european union she is not for uh, uh, dismantling this union and uh, india as well uh, it for india it is uh, good that if european union which is a sort of single market if we have access if we have a good trade relation between these two uh, between these two parties uh, european union and india now between these two uh, parties uh, we have uh, bilateral trade and investment agreement right which is known as btia so bilateral trade and investment agreement btia is the thing that is between that is joining or negotiations basically are going on between india and european union the major difference is that european union wants india to remove the duties from the cars and wines and other products right so you can imagine that if we allow if we get rid of the duties um, that is uh, that is levied on this mercedes bmw and other cars of europe then you know that uh, it is going to be in direct competition with indian companies and of course everyone knows about the technological prowess of this german cars particularly and the other french cars you have renault and uh, your british cars as well land rover jaguar and other ones so we would be in direct uh, sort of competition indian uh, car making or automobile industry will be in competition and of course we will lose so uh, that's the reason to to create a sort of artificial barrier we are um, we have implemented this sort of duties on this cars and germany or the europe european union they want us to get rid of it so this is something that uh, is a uh, this is something that uh, European Union is not happy about with India now India when from our side we want free flow of skilled people we want our IT professionals and uh, uh, teachers and other people uh, other skilled workforce from our country to have a, a sort of easy access we don't want them to migrate there forever if they're happy to stay there then that's their choice but we want them to have access to European countries and uh, so in this way these are the two things um, from indian side and from european side and this is basically the biggest blockage in in taking this btia forward uh, there is another thing regarding germany and it is about refugees and let me tell you i give you a big picture about why we see refugee crisis taking place in europe now in europe uh, there is a sort of sentiment going on at present and people in europe are not happy about there are many countries in which you find different parties that uh, that are engaged in uh, 
in in opposing this uh, this migrants coming into their country immigrants basically coming into their country uh, so they are not happy and they are being a bit rude as well they're being a bit aggressive in their demonstration and the reason why people are particularly from africa and syria and other parts it is of course that they are facing war and all those situations but apart from that if you observe the map of african continent you will find the borders this is interesting isn't it the borders are quite straight look at this straight straight lines all across why this is happening or why you find this sort of borders because at one point of time the europe different european countries have colonized this African continent, right? You find Germany uh, ruling on different countries, you have French on different countries, British, etc. So now when this country is particularly the Saharan region, when they are facing economical crisis, they are saying that you have been, you have acted as a sort of lord on us, and you were, you were the reason behind it. So now we are coming to your country and you got to look after us. So this is the basic crux about this thing regarding refugees now coming on to important things uh, and when i say important it does not mean that these things were altogether not important but comparing to compare when we compare this thing with uh, the other articles then this are quite important again this one is a big no no don't spend time after this one um right so power problem this is about so bhagya right so bhagya stands for sahaj bijli har ghar yojana now we have talked about the basic uh, why electricity is a sort of basic uh, pillar uh, for the economy for any country and uh, you know that uh, it is about uh, digital education or education in even if it's not digital then as well without a light and table uh, without light or fan or other things you know that institutions are not going to work isn't it so you have uh, it will improve access to electricity basically will improve education of course health services nowadays uh, it is all e isn't it electronic health and so if you are in assam and if you want to consult a, 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 say for example a doctor in apollo madras or at chennai basically then as well you can um, via video conferencing you can do it uh, you have pragati platform right Go, uh, narendra modi uh, conducts a sort of pragati meeting every month and uh, this meeting is of course taking place on digital platform so it is going to uh, work for e-governance as well and uh, of course public safety you have cctv cameras street lights right with uh, there are incidents or there are some uh, solid documents that uh, without street lights you find that it is very difficult to ensure the safety of particularly women uh, in our country so the more street lights we have the more the more it is uh, it is easier for the woman to um, uh, to come out from their home in particularly in the dark hours then of course communication facilities and uh, the other important point regarding it is that if we uh, get electricity then we th there would be less reliance on kerosene as well and with this we less carbon footprint so these are the major things that uh, this uh, sobhagya these are the basic points uh, which of course sobhagya is also targeting and we can understand with the expansion of electricity these things will improve now let's uh, go through the important items now what are the main aims behind this sobhagya first of all it is to provide electricity to unelectrified households by 2019 in this hindu editorial it was written 2018 by the end of 2018 but the uh, if we go through the official thing then it is march 2019 so i have corrected this thing now united nation uh, beg your pardon uh, it is unelectrified households so unelectrified household has a relation here because if we go through if you compare this sobhagya scheme with the past schemes that were running like dindayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana and rajiv gandhi gram vidyutikaran yojana then the major difference is that earlier the definition of electrified village was that if say for example out of 100 uh, hundred, uh, households in a village if only 10 percent or that is 10 households if they have electricity access then this village was certified as electrified village now this is something really uh, stupid isn't it this is something very horrid so this is going to be eliminated this was happening in these two schemes and the other schemes but now with sobhagya it is about household I individual household and we are not talking about villages here right so 100 percent penetration of electricity all across the board in our country 
the budget is going to be 16,000 crore or something more than that and uh, another aim that we talk about is to provide subsidy on equipment like transformers meters and wires we have talked about during our discussion on Jandhan Yojana and I told you that any policy uh, any sort of scheme or Yojana when they become successful the main reason is that the people who have designed it they know the reality that is going on in the gra at grassroots level so something uh, we can see here as well that if you of course when you take electric connection then you have to pay something for your meter right you have to deposit money for your meters and other things now for a poor person he won't be uh, ready to if even if he has 2000 rupees in his saving account he won't be uh, ready to spend this or deposit or, or deposit uh, or to deposit it with the electric city company right he won't do that and he will rather refrain he will rather decide to go ahead with this kerosene and other source of um, you know, of light rather than taking electricity so by removing this uh, or providing subsidy uh, it is a good thing and now government has clearly said as well government will of course provide subsidy to the companies but it has said that no price will be charged for the people for the poor people to get an electric connection this is very important thing now uh, there are basic at present if we go through our country the figures indicate that four crore people of our country are yet to get electricity that means even in after 70 years of our independence they are still living in dark and university of uh, universal access oh i'm making so many <sighs> anyways sorry about that as i told you that i'm running through some severe flu and thoughts so my mind is playing with me in this way but anyways uh, universal access to electricity is a long standing promise right we have to ensure that each and every person in our country has access to electricity and we know the benefits uh, of this electricity isn't it and uh, earlier there was a case that india used to be a sort of uh, a country with power shortage but now we are a power surplus country as well and if we go through the figures of last three years then we find that the power capacity installed power capacity has increased by 12 percent in last three years so this is a good sign as well now uh, modi ji has the way they he is taking or the way government is taking this whole uh, electricity issue is uh, it is definitely d uh, demonstrating their seriousness about this thing they are providing enough fund and uh, they are also trying to sort the issues that are going on with the discoms but uh, this article or this editorial also talks about that there are sort of some uh, some structural issues as well which this uh, this yojana this sopagya yojana is not able to address and it is saying that the real problem with this uh, with electricity is that it's affordability right people cannot afford the bills that they go th that comes out there because it, this happens because of the rate of per unit this is quite high in our country and the only way we can sort it out is if we suit up supply if we increase the supply then of course if you have limited demand and if you increase the supply then of course the prices will come down so this is the solution that it is talking about apart from that we are also going to see a sort of major change in the way electricity is provided in our country because nowadays we know that uh, many villages will set up sort of solar parks in their area so now they don't need any sort of electric connection coming from any companies major companies uh, say for example you have a major company here it is providing electricity to different villages your village is here and uh, they will provide you connection uh, by wire so now you don't need it you don't need to rely on it because you can set up your own wind and solar energy uh, rooftop energy rooftop solar panels and things like that that will provide you most of your energy need isn't it and uh, government has also said in this uh, sobhagya yojana that some of the areas which are not able uh, in, you know that in our country we have some uh, geographical issues as well like if you go to far fetch uh, areas of uh, dras and other places then it is difficult for um, any company or government to provide wires and things like that uh, electric connection basically uh, to some areas difficult geographical areas so over there government will supply some sort of batteries or other sort of things will be like a, a setup will be uh, conducted or established over there through which they can produce their own electricity right 
the other important thing and uh, this is pertaining to this discoms that is distribution companies is that they are uh, this yojana is of course silent on the illegal connections as well a huge amount of power theft uh, do take place in our country which is detrimental for any country and economy and of course the companies that are engaged in this business of uh, power supplying and uh, if you go through this uh, thing then uh, if we understand if we if we when we take this issue of power theft then we see that this is one of the reason why distribution companies are bleeding and remember if distribution companies are bleeding then they will not be able to expand and if they are not able to expand then we are not going to achieve this 24 by 7 all across the board electric city or you can say electric city security for all our uh, citizens right so for that it is a very important that power theft should be eliminated and this can be eliminated when we uh, and when when, in, when we encourage or when we penetrate meter coverage we need 100 percent meter coverage in many parts as i told you people are engaged in stealing or, or stealing this power the other solution of uh, one solution for this uh, theft could be the prepaid meters this uh, uh, is applicable in many uh, developed countries and you can see either you have a sort of key or you can have a sort of a card as well you have to reach out this key and card and uh, you have to insert in it press the button and off you go so you do this prepaid rather than postpaid rather than getting a bill so in this way the working capital of this power companies will be uh, healthy as well they would be able to expand and etc things like that and the other important item regarding this uh, distribution company is that government should allow them uh, to decide the prices right freedom to sell at profitable prices this freedom should be bestowed on this distribution company the other thing that india can do so far we have focused only on supply when we talk about the country of uh, when we talk about india as a country uh, we have only focused on supply side management but now we have to focus on the demand side management as well and when we talk about demand side management uh, we are talking about efficiency we know ujwal um, we know this uh, uh, ujwal yojana right and under this ujwal yojana you have uh, i beg your pardon this is ujala yojana right leds are given to you uh, in subsidized subsidized rate and with this you can uh, of course your bills will come down so efficiency will be ensured with this sort of uh, with this sort of management techniques if we apply it in the demand side with this uh, there would be less sort of stress on power generation as well if we have efficient uh, electric products uh, at the grassroots level or all across the board and so less stress on power generation and uh, of course less a carbon footprint as well so this is the key and when we talk about uh, success whether this uh, scheme is successful or not and uh, what i feel that this scheme on based on this scheme you will definitely find a question in your mains examination because this thing is uh, something when we talk about 24 by 7 right we know that we do get electricity but uh, many of uh, us who have this access to electricity we cannot uh, say with a surety that we are getting 24 by 7 in many parts of country you get uh, they are electrified but there is no sort of constant supply of electricity throughout the day and night so the day when we will have no sort of uh, inverters and generators only then we can say that we have achieved real success when it comes to electricity security right of course these things are not mentioned in this uh, editorial but this is I'm, I have from my side I have tried to add value to this uh, item because uh, as I told you for your mains examination and of course you will find something in your prelims as well uh, judging by the way uh, this uh, judging by this uh, but judging by the importance of this topic now uh, Ujwala we have talked about this uh, Uday uh, and again let me give you a brief uh, brief idea about this Uday Uday stands for Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana you know Discoms are distribution companies and uh, Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana is uh, this Uday is basically this as I told you this company this distribution companies uh, are bleeding and uh, to to change their 
financial situation because of uh, theft and bad debts and other things uh, this government launched this scheme but overall it is said that this has not been a sort of successful move but the main motives or objectives of this Uday scheme was uh, financial turn around of discoms then operational improvement reduction of cost power generation uh, development of renewable energy and energy efficiency and conservation so this was uh, these are some of the main objectives of Uday and here it is a sort of picture as well official picture of Uday right so with this we end this uh, editorial but let's move on to another item and this is about United Nation the recent incidents or the recent things that are going on in United Nation and how it is uh, it is detrimental for the reputation of this uh, this world body it starts with uh, a statement of uh, Diwan of Mysore uh, at the time in 1945 when uh, this India's princely state sent a single representative to sign a charter of United Nation at the San Francisco conference uh, at that point of time uh, this Diwan of Mysore said that uh, there is one great reality which all religion religions teach and that is the dignity of the common man that's what United Nation was formed for we know that this institution uh, 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 the inception of this institution took place after the World War two isn't it and basically one of the main motive of United Nation was to ensure that World War three uh, does not take place um, so at that point of time there were 50 members today we have uh, 192 members 191 192 members and the things that are going on, the way United Nation is carrying itself, uh, it is something that is quite, it is very, uh, a sort of matter of worry. Because, uh, see, in mains examination, you could be asked uh, that uh, United Nation is not effective or it has uh, lost its, uh, its uh, grip. Or the people have or the countries are losing its uh, trust in United Nation critically analyzed. This sort of questions can be asked in your and this is a very beautiful article in that term it is talking about it is highlighting the drawbacks or the th the demerits or you can say the negative side or the dark side of United Nation now we know this is the thing that we started our discussion today's discussion with this is the picture which I was talking to you about this is of course Pakistani diplomat and this is our able Indian foreign foreign service uh, personnel right we have uh, uh, displayed <laughs> we have been able to keep Pakistan in hall of shame so basically this of course looks nice when we talk uh, from patriotic point of view we are happy about exposing Pakistan in this uh, world forum but from United Nations point of view if we if we see it if we analyze this thing the things that are taking place in you place in United Nations then it be it, it worries us as well because this sort of war bitterly war going on between countries and this is not uh, something that's uh, just started we know that this problem is something somewhere around 70 year old problem isn't it and still today as well United Nation has not been able to solve this issue that is going on between India and Pakistan again if we go through the 1953s the Korean War and after that we know that in uh, United Nation has not been able to solve the problem going on between North Korea and United Nation apart from that the Secretary General uh, he has uh, means this article also indicates that uh, this uh, 70 72nd General Assembly is one of the most disappointing uh, sessions of United Nation and uh, the Secretary General that is the Antonio Guterres uh, in his speech on 19 September he said that the world should be uh, the world should be in peace right uh, it should not be in pieces like if we need a world that is living or co uh, the countries coexisting with each other in 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 with tolerance and acceptability rather than fighting with each other and he also pointed out seven biggest threats and this are important right these are important for your overall understanding of geopolitics we know nuclear threats nuclear issues india pakistan then you have uh, this north korea uh, recently we saw the the iran deal as well is it was in news iran nuclear deal uh, we will talk about that as well then terrorism I don't have to say anything about it you know it very well we have discussed this thing unresolved conflicts many Syria uh, you have uh, problems going on in West Asia Saudi Arabia and uh, 
Iran group, then you have USA Iran, you have Israel Iran, uh, then we have uh, this uh, China, USA, China, India, India, Pakistan. So I can go on and on. There are so many conflicts that are still unresolved, isn't it? Then we have uh, this violation of international humanitarian law, things going on in Myanmar, Syria, Sub-Saharan region, etc. Climate change. We have talked about this thing as well, growing in inequality. Very few people having huge amount of money, but majority of people not having even uh, food security. So these are the things. This is the world in which we are living. And on the other hand, we are seeing increasing sort of uh, increase in cyber warfare and misuse of artificial intelligence as well. Now, talking about sanctions, this is the thing that uh, this is... Uh, oh, a sort of only weapon that is used by uh, this United Nation it it applies sanctions on different countries right so we have seen that sanctions are not working at all if you go through the history then we find that sanctions are a big no-no the more sanctions you apply what happens is the regimes that are controlling these people they will get more strength they will they will they will win brownie points emotional brownie points they will say like look the world is behaving with us in this way um, I am here for you that is the reason why we need you guys should support me for nuclear weapons this is what is happening in North Korea as well the more sanctions we are applying the more emotional brownie point this Kim Jong-un is uh, collecting from uh, his people then uh, in if we go through other areas we know the Taliban regime in Afghanistan we applied sanctions right United Nations applied sanctions sanctions but it did not work uh, there are other 27 26 regimes uh, so far since 1996 they were under uh, sanctions but uh, out of which nearly 13 are still active but it is not helping we have not been able to solve this problem now uh, lacking guarantees now this portion of this article is about that they see the steps uh, taken by different groups or countries now here you see NATO right North Atlantic Treaty Organization it is led by USA and you have different countries western countries uh, that are part of this NATO and basically it is a sort of military group so if you attack USA or say for example if Australia is attacked uh, then all the NATO countries will provide support in attacking attacking the country that has uh, attacked Australia so this is a small example so whenever this uh, NATO and other groups are misbehaving or taking decision by their own then as well United Nations is not able to stop them recently we have seen that uh, Iran nuclear deal USA that Donald Trump said that we are going to cancel this dream how can they do it because the whole deal was under United Nation and it was the P5 plus one countries and uh, Iran together and there were many other countries as well that that they have uh, created a ground for the discussion but now USA is saying that we are stepping out so United Nation is not saying anything to them in terms of uh, Paris climate change as well US USA has said that we are going to step out of it in terms of this fund providing they have said we are going to step out of it in terms of uh, humanitarian crisis we see that recently Kofi Annan who was uh, secretary general of uh, the United Nation today we have Antonio Antonio Guterres but b before that he w uh, we had uh, Ban Ki-moon and before Ban Ki-moon we had uh, this Kofi Annan he's from Ghana basically and he was in Myanmar to to find out the facts about the things going on here he just uh, submitted his report on this uh, massacres and we see that Myanmar is uh, the, the, the country of Myanmar uh, is uh, the way it is treating Rohingyas so these are the things when it comes to United Nations Security Council or terrorism India has been trying for the longest period of time to convince United Nations we don't have a definition at this level and we are not United Nation is not doing anything it has identified these people as terrorists but still they are doing what they are doing so this is the thing uh, that is going on in United Nation and the only thing that can get rid of it is that we have to think as a globe and right? we have to think as partners with each other we have to think as members rather than uh, putting the interest of individual country first if we are going through this way then it is going to deteriorate this United Nation even further uh, United States Defense Minister which is termed as a uh, defense secretary right so it is equivalent post uh, so he was he is in fact in India and he met um, 
this uh, defense minister of our country and both have uh, talked about Afghanistan and India has clearly ruled out that we are not going to deploy our soldiers in Afghanistan but we will provide other assistance like medical and uh, other things that we are have been providing we have provided like 3 billion aid to Afghanistan and we have trained their forces we have provided them helicopters and other things and uh, they have also talked about the the issues going on in Indian Ocean and Asia Pacific and freedom of navigation was in discussion it was particularly indicating towards China's growing uh, gr growing assertiveness in South China Sea here you can see this is South China Sea and this is the area right nine dash line and Spartley and Paracal Islands these are the ones uh, that are claimed by China it is not uh, paying any heed to the international laws as well so this is something that we have to worry about worry about apart from that China is also increasing its presence in uh, Indian Ocean that is one of the reason both the nations have talked about Indian Ocean and freedom of uh, navigation freedom of navigation is pertaining to South China Sea and you can see here uh, it is building ports in different parts of Indian Ocean so this is something uh, uh, which uh, USA and India are skeptical about 5G rollout by 2020 the government is going to prepare the ground about this thing and uh, it is just a thing that you should keep yourself updated with apart from that it is there is nothing sort of it is just a sort of curtain raiser uh, US not just India Afghanistan deal USA is trying its level best to ensure that the relation between India and Afghanistan are smooth and in this term the Gwadar uh, Chabahar port right uh, Chabahar port is a port that is developed by India in Iran and recently we have said that it will be operationalized by 2018 so this can be a big help you can see here from Mumbai you can go to Chabahar from here you can take rail and road route and Afghanistan so things uh, right products services and people can uh, seamlessly flow from these two countries Afghanistan and India because we have Pakistan in between that is the reason we are not able to take this land route now there is a sort of uh, volcanic eruption likely to take place in this Mount Agung uh, it is in Bali Indonesia right so keep this in mind uh, and uh, this is basically on ring uh, Pacific ring of fire we have talked about it I have provided you pictures as well so you know what it is all about isn't it Pacific ring of fire it is the place where 85 percent of all these earthquakes uh, takes place and this all takes this things are happening because of the lithospheric plates uh, then you have uh, 149 uh, Indians are going to release from Sarjaha. Sarjaha is in UAE, and this is a big picture of, or a sort of graph of different Indians languishing in Indian nationals uh, lodged in foreign jails. With this, I have three questions for you. One is descript descriptive, and the other ones are MCQ sort of. Uh, I'm so glad, and when I see, I go through the answers that are provided to you, I feel so proud that uh, the students with which I'm interacting on daily basis, you guys are so curious about the things you are always ready to learn and you are taking active part this all things are clear sign of your success every day you are becoming better and better so keep this spirit up don't forget to get your pen drive and tablet courses with this i end this discussion don't forget to subscribe share comment and of course take part in this question and answer series with this i prashant maoni would like to sign off for now i'll see you soon jai hind now we uh, have spotted that you